Welcome back to Fast Money. We are just getting big news on the vaccine front. The CDC just completing its vote on new guidance over who should be first in line to receive a COVID vaccine. Let's get to Meg Terrell with the news. Meg. Melissa, this literally coming in just within the last seconds to minutes. And this outside group of advisors to the CDC has voted 13 to 1 that the absolute top group in prioritization for the COVID vaccine should include healthcare workers and residents of long-term care facilities like nursing homes. Now, the debate today was really whether the long-term care facility residents should be included in that top group. Of course, they are the most vulnerable to severe disease and death from COVID. There are about 3 million people in that group. Uh, and in the healthcare worker group, there are 21 million people. And of course, healthcare workers are our front lines against this pandemic. So so as we are going to have such limited supply of these vaccines at the beginning, that's why this group needed to talk about the prioritization. There should be about 20 million doses available uh, for people in the month of December. Uh, and so that won't completely cover that group of healthcare workers at 21 million and uh, nursing home residents with an additional 3 million. So some considerations are going to have to be made even within those groups. And that will be probably made more on the local level. How will you uh, prioritize within healthcare workers, for example, Mel? But that news coming through, the absolute top list of the priority for the vaccine, healthcare workers and people living in long-term care facilities. Melissa? Uh, in terms of that, I have a couple of quick questions. 20 million, and that means 20 million times two. So it's 20 million people can receive the full two shot dose of the vaccine. And then after it is allocated for on the federal level, is it up to the state to then allocate to various hospital systems and nursing homes? And then from there, it gets allocated once again within that subgroup? Yeah, so the way it's gonna be allocated from the federal level is just on a per capita basis, the number of people in each state over age 18. They're gonna divide it up that way and send the shipments to the states. And they're gonna come out in shipments of a few million at a time. The first one of Pfizer's vaccine should be 6.4 million doses, so enough for 3.2 million people. Um, and then within the states, they make their own priorities about where those vaccines will go. And so we're going to be hearing a lot more about that over the coming weeks as the states get their plans in order. And we learn about this complicated process of this vaccine making its way out. But this is the recommendation from the CDC's advisory committee about how the priorities should be set. And then the states can do what they want to do. They don't have to follow these recommendations, but it is to try to give guidance. All right, Meg, thank you. Meg Terrell, uh, with that uh, breaking news out of the CDC. Let's bring in Jared Holtz, a healthcare equity strategist at Jefferies. Jared, great to have you with us. Any surprises uh, to how the CDC allocated? And, and I would think that the devil's in the details in terms of beyond this, how the vaccine gets allocated. For sure. Thanks for having me, Melissa. I appreciate it. Not really surprised at all. We've been speaking for months about who would be first in line, so to speak, to get these vaccines essential workers, uh, the elderly population, you know, Meg mentioned the nursing home facilities getting, um, you know, first to, you know, the first available shots that are that are sent by Pfizer or Moderna. I think that that totally is in line with what we had felt coming into this vote. So nothing ultimately that surprising into tomorrow. All right. Um, I want to uh, get into the trade behind one vaccine maker in particular, Jared, because the stock move intraday was really interesting. And of course, we're talking about Moderna, which traded up to a new high in today's session above 170, well over that, uh, and then dipped lower uh, midday. And I'm wondering if you think if, if you know of any news that is behind this whatsoever. Well, the company seems to be releasing press releases on a daily basis, so it's very, very difficult to sort of ascertain what matters and what doesn't matter. Um, but just looking at the trading volume over the past, call it three to four weeks versus the prior month, we've seen volume accelerate or multiply by three, four, five times, in some cases even higher. Today would be, you know, one example of that happening. So in my mind, you know, the, the trading activity has to be coming from non-institutional buyers that seem to be buying either the stock outright, Moderna shares outright, or they're buying a basket of these vaccine stocks because we just haven't seen names like this trade um, with these characteristics or these traits in such a long time. And it you know, makes me think of cryptocurrency, makes me think a little bit of Tesla. Um, I've been using that as a comparison as well, just in terms of not having any true valuation framework, but the stock getting bid up every day. I think today was a reflection of the fact that 
these, you know, the stocks, Moderna and some of its peers mm -hmm. probably got too overheated. It's really, really tough to call the top or a ceiling. The valuation doesn't really seem to be um, all that relevant day to day. But looking at how these things are trading, they're all trading pre-market um, fairly aggressively every day. And they have been for the past few weeks. So that sort of, you know, tells me that there are some there's some trading activity that is a little bit abnormal. Some might argue, just to play devil's advocate for Moderna, Jared, that uh, the proof that the vaccine works is, is basically proof of concept for the rest of their platform in terms of vaccines. And when we spoke to the CEO, Stefan Bonsell, on Squawk Box the other day uh, on the release of this second round, this sort of verification of that 94 percent number, he mentioned um, a vaccine for pregnant women to prevent birth defects. He mentioned uh, working on a better, more effective flu vaccine. Isn't that a good thing? Does that does that give Moderna, you know, a higher valuation because we know that there is proof of concept now? Well, certainly, I think the, the way the stock is performed on the back of the COVID-19 data itself is a reflection that investors are willing to assign some sort of value to the rest of the company, so to speak. And so, you know, the therapeutic areas that you mentioned, I think, are interesting. Um, you know, we can sort of debate on, on how big those market opportunities are. Certainly the flu vaccine market is something, um, and we discussed this last week, I think, where you know, you're seeing pricing at a dollar, a dollar fifty per injection. So prices that are, you know, well south of the COVID-19 vaccine. So I, I guess the short answer would be yes, it validates the platform. Um, you know, the flip side of the coin would be how big are these markets? And you know, at, at one point today, uh, the stock, it, this was the second largest U.S. biotech company by market cap. So, wow. you know, I think in some ways investors have already decided that, you know, the value for the company is larger than just the, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. All right. Jared, we're going to leave it there. Always great to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. Jared Holtz of Jefferies and our friend Carter Braxton Worth of Cornerstone sent this email out saying that uh, a total of 124 million shares of Moderna changed hands today for a total value traded in a single session of $19 billion. And that handily beats any other stock that is traded in a single day in terms of value traded in at least the past 15 years or so. Guy Adami, I thought what Jared had mentioned in terms of trading within a basket, trading as a group, that's really interesting because we've seen that time and time again. Yeah, and listen, Carter Braxton Worth is clearly in my head because I was going to mention the fact that the stock traded 10 times normal volume today. Obviously traded up to 178, I think. You saw the way it reversed, closed lower. By the way, again, kudos to Karen because I think it was a couple weeks ago she had mentioned that the difference between Pfizer and Moderna was the fact that Moderna was looking at this through more of a capitalistic lens, and that's, that's borne itself out. This is what I would caution, though. This was a $60 stock a month ago. It effectively tripled uh, deep into the pool. And, and to the other point about valuation, I mean, you're talking about Amgen maybe has got a $120 billion market cap, and then there's a big drop-off. If you're looking to play in the space, the IBB is about to break out above 148. That's your bogey. And the one that's really interesting to me in terms of biotech is Biogen, which just look at what that stock's done over the last couple months, From basically 250 to 378 back to 250 on a couple downgrades on the back of their Alzheimer's drug. I think you got another shot to buy Biogen if you're looking for a trade. I'd rather be in Biogen for that return move than Moderna here at nosebleed levels. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.